So here we are, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform, the next racing game in the Sonic Racing Trilogy, released on November 16th of 2012 for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Wii U, Vita, 3DS, Steam, as well as mobile devices. After the success of Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, and how the game would sell over a million copies within the first month, fans demanded a second Sonic racing game, and Sumo Digital delivered. When I saw the commercial on TV, I asked my mom to get it for me on Christmas Day. The rules of racing are about to change. Furious. Death defying. Racing action. So, did this game live up to mine and people's expectations? Let's find out. First, the character roster. Like the previous game, Sonic Transform has up to over 20 characters to choose from. Of course, we have Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Shadow, and Dr. Eggman from the Sonic series. Yeah, Big the Cat didn't make the cut this time. But if he weren't in the game, then why the fuck didn't you put Rouge in the game? Ah well, at least he's in tune Sonic Racing, so I'll give someone digital that. Returning from Sonic and Sega Racing, we have Beat from Jet Set Radio, Oolala from Space Channel 5, Amigo from Sam de Amigo, I I from Super Monkey Ball, and BD Joe from Crazy Taxi. Returning from Sega Superstars Tennis, we have Knights and Riala from the Knights franchise, Gilius from Golden Axe, Puddin from Space Channel 5, and Gum from Jet Set Radio. Joining the ranks are Vice from Skies of Arcadia, Joe Musashi from Shinobi, and Aegis, which is a mix of the F14 Tomcat from Afterburner, a Sega Dreamcast controller, Yes, that is actually the bolt, okay. And a Hornet from Daytona USA. Now, Alex Kidd is also a playable character as a Christmas present. If you play the game on Christmas Day, you'll immediately unlock him. I have no idea why would they lock him behind a holiday, but you can just bypass the system by setting your console on Christmas Day. So I find that to be pretty worthless. And once again, Metal Sonic is a DLC character. I don't know why they would do this. It made sense for the last game, but why do it again? They could have added Rystar as a DLC character, yet they made him the Flagman instead. I think it would have been really better if Metal Sonic was part of the base roster. Still, these next two characters made up for the BS, and they're the reasons why this game is called All-Stars instead of Sega All-Stars. <laughs> I'm not a bad guy, but on occasion, I am a bad racer. Hey, Sonic, what are you doing in a car? Let's get wrecking! Three, two, one, go! Watch it! My car just turned into a boat! Sonic Crew has to! Here goes! Cool! Did it again! Help. Miss me! 
Wreck-It Ralph, and Sonic Transform. Holy fuck. I thought Sonic being in Wreck-It Ralph, the movie, was good. But this, like, damn. Sega and Disney were really locked in at that time. Like, this was the biggest reason why I wanted this game. Wreck-It Ralph is easily the best Disney movie ever made. And I am so glad he is in the game. And they've also brought in Danica Patrick, a NASCAR star that I know nothing about, but I'm not complaining. However, I can complain that the PC version has way more exclusive characters. Team Fortress, Shogun, Football Manager, General Winner. They even added a fucking YouTuber in the game. That's bullshit. What makes the PC version so special that it gets over seven fucking exclusive characters? That's just unfair. When it was also unfair, Bayonetta not making a cut. See, when they were developing the game, Bayonetta was supposed to be a playable character, but because they had trouble trying to keep her in character without having the ESRB go in and go up, she was scrapped from the game. Yeah, I think Sumo Digital dropped the ball with this one, especially since she became DLC for Smash 4. So Nintendo really played it smart in the end, and Sega really missed out big time. Despite the few mishaps, this is still a solid character roster. I'm glad I get the players put in again, and Gum is a solid character too. With that being said, time to jump into the gameplay. So the gameplay is also similar to its predecessor in many ways. Boosting still feels the same, but this time the boost goes from red to purple and then light blue. And if you fall off the map, you'll still recover quickly. Although you recover a bit quicker than how you would in the previous game. Now for the differences, the trick system has been moved to the right control stick. And instead of doing animations, you're now doing flips and barrel rolls, making it easier to get a triple boost. We now got new items this time, except they're a bit more impactful than the previous game's idols, but not as impactful as the items in Mario Kart, which is good. I like using the baseball glove, which not only blocks any incoming attacks, but you can use said attacks against the sender. And the fireworks are perfect for hitting someone at random as it bounces on the wall for a few seconds before exploding. You can even use the coins you collected in order to use the slot machine to get yourself a bonus effect that will help you throughout the entire race, which I find pretty cool. But unlike the previous game, you can use the all-star moves online. I'll save that for when we talk about the negatives of this game. And just like the last game, the online is also dead. Rarely anyone plays this game online anymore, which is a bit unfortunate. I think it's time I cover the main gimmick of Sonic Transform, which is in the title. At certain points in almost every track, your vehicle will transform into two different vehicles. You can splash your way through in a speedboat, or you can take it to the skies in a plane. This adds more personality to the game instead of just being a standard kart racer. If you want to transform a bit earlier, you'll have moments to do so. And depending on which form of vehicle you're in, will determine how they control. The race cars control very well, and the planes work just fine. You can change the axis of the planes so you'll have better control of them. And doing barrel rolls and flips ain't gonna give you boosts, because that'll be unfair. However, you can still drift in the air to get a boost. You can even get rewarded with a boost for near-hit experiences. So when you're about to crash into an obstacle, you'll have a small window of time to barrel roll or flip out of the way, giving you an extra boost for being a crazy daredevil. So the plane aspect is pretty cool. The same can be said for the speedboats, but they can be a bit of a pain to control sometimes. Still, it is fun to do tricks while on the speedboat, and it can lead to so many fun spectacles. Every character has a thing called vehicle mods. These can change the stats of your character's vehicle, from speed, to boost, to handling, to acceleration, and you even make it balance. In order to unlock these mods, you'll have to level up every character, because this game does have experience points, and you'll earn these by simply playing the game. They can really help out in a game that is very fast paced from start to finish. Sonic Transform is the perfect example of a racing game that is fueled to the brim with hypeness and intensity. The speed of this game can lead to some of the most blood pumping and adrenaline races you'll have with friends and family. And this leads us to the race tracks. There are 20 tracks to choose from, which is a bit less from the previous game, but unlike Sonic and Sega Racing where a franchise have three different variants, now every franchise has only one or two. I mean, obviously Sonic's gonna have the most, but at least we now have some variety this time. We have a new CSI Hill track from Sonic Heroes, Galactic Parade from Sonic Colors, and Sky Sanctuary from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. We also got the return of Roulette Road and a Death Egg track from Sonic and Sega Racing. 
and they play exactly the same, so I have nothing bad to say about them. Aside from Sonic, some of the Amigo and Jet Set Radio each have two tracks, one that is brand new and the other is also a returning track. We also have new tracks from Super Monkey Ball, Purian Mansion, and Billy Hatcher. And now we have even more franchises getting some representation in this game. Panzers and Dragons, Skies of Arcadia, Burning Rangers, Shinobi, Afterburner, Golden Axe, and Knights. We also have a new track called Race of Ages. So yeah, the track variety is very strong. 20 tracks from 13 different franchises. But what makes the tracks stand out is that they also transform throughout each lap. In certain tracks, you'll be seeing them transform permanently for each lap. You'll be racing through burning rangers and for each lap the water level gets higher and in the third lap, you'll be in boat mode for the majority of that lap. In the panthers and dragon track, you're racing your car for the whole first lap, then you're going to boat mode in the second lap, and finally you'll be in planes for the majority of the final lap. For each lap in the nice track, you'll encounter a boss and you'll have to avoid every obstacle to throw at you. However, the most amazing track to have these lap transitions is definitely Skies of Arcadia. For the first lap, you'll be driving through the docks, flying through the tunnels, and then sailing through the lakes. In the second lap, the airships will arrive and will start blowing shit up throughout that lap. However, once you get to the third lap, all the roads will be destroyed, so you'll be flying for the rest of that lap and airships will be crashing throughout the lap as well. It's almost like it's telling a story throughout the race. It's such an awesome thing to see. And even ignoring the lap transitions, these tracks are still amazing to race on. My all time favorite track in this game is Galactic Parade. Not just because it's from Sonic Colors, but also because of how colorful the track looks. And the areas you go through are so lovely to see. My only nitpick is that the soundtrack has been neutered. Now every race track has only one music track, which is a bit of a bummer. However, the biggest savior to the soundtrack is how remixed it is. Take Ocean View for example. You'll be hearing a remix mashup of You Can Do Anything from Sonic CD and Super Sonic Racing from Sonic R, which is awesome to hear. Then we get to Sky Sanctuary and you'll hear a remix mashup of Sky Sanctuary's theme and Back in Time from once again Sonic R. Galactic Parade has a really good remix of Starlight Carnival Samba Studios has a nice remix of Vamos A Carnival, and I like the remix of Aura of Dread from House of the Dead. Wow, that really rhymed there. The producers of the soundtrack have done a phenomenal job giving these tracks the proper love they deserve. Such an amazing soundtrack for me to listen to. So, what about the game modes themselves? Well, it should be noted that you can play multiplayer everywhere except for online. World Tour is where you'll go through a bunch of challenges to collect stars and unlock extra content. From drifting into zones, to boosting to get into checkpoints in time, race without items, surviving races without getting eliminated, beating rivals in rival races, fighting against tanks, and many more. The higher the difficulty, the more stars you'll get. Grand Prix is where you're racing 5 normal GPs and 5 mirror GPs. We got Dragon Cup, Road Cup, Ammo Cup, Arcade Cup, and Classic Cup. Pretty simple, but at least you don't have to play all of them on each difficulty. But just like the last game, the speed doesn't change no matter which cup you pick. Thank God. And of course, there's your standard single race where you can do a race of computers or friends and family. But you can't choose how many laps you want, unfortunately. And finally, there's time trials where you'll have to beat the staff ghosts again. Pretty simple, nothing special. You also have your multiplayer modes as well. Race, Battle Arena, Battle Race, Capture the Child, and Boost Race. And just saying this now, Sonic Transform has the best multiplayer out of all the Sonic racing games. The fact that you're able to play multiplayer almost everywhere in the game is awesome. Finally, we can do a 4 player Grand Prix. You can even have friends over to help you get through the World Tour mode. Sumo Digital really improved on the multiplayer. Even better than Sonic and Sega's racing multiplayer. Oh, you wow, you literally pushed me off. Okay. Uh. I came from last Wow, talk about playing dirty. Talk about playing dirty. So with all of these positives I've listed throughout this review, you would think that this game would be the best Sonic racing game of all time, and it is a must-buy. 
And I totally agree, it's definitely a must buy considering how much content this game has. And if you're a fan of Sonic or kart racers in general, it's definitely a must buy. With that being said, don't expect me to consider this as the best Sonic racing game of all time because it definitely has some negatives as well that holds it back. Firstly, it's the all-star moves. They have been neutered to the ground. The previous game gave us such wacky all-star moves in order to use to make them very unique. Here, all it does is have you flying in plane mode and either shooting long range attacks or do a short range attack. It completely ruins the uniqueness of all-star moves. Secondly, it's the track design on some of these tracks. I fucking despise burning rangers. The turning is so bad and for some reason you can get stuck trying to do a trick off one of the ramps. Golden Axe also suffers from track design. You could be boosting really fast and as you do a trick off a ramp, you'll ram into the inside wall of a dragon or a snakehead, which can really fuck you over. Some of these tracks could have been handled better. Thirdly is how unbalanced the game is. No matter which difficulty you're on, these goddamn computers will rubber band like a motherfucker. And I can't even begin to tell you how many times I get hit with a backwards item even when I'm in last place or in any different location. These CPUs are fucking insane. And lastly is the unlocking system and how you unlock characters. Let me break it down for you all. I do enjoy unlocking content in the game because it can be so rewarding. But with how Sonic Transform handled the unlocking system is so damn bad. Why the fuck do we have to unlock Dr. Eggman in the Grand Prix? Why is Amigo locked off? Now I wouldn't mind unlocking these characters if we didn't have to collect stars in order to do so. As you progress through the world tour, you'll collect stars which you can use to unlock mods and characters. Now unlocking courses is easy enough, you just have to play the game and that's it. And locking the mods behind stars is one thing. But the fact that you have to collect stars in order to unlock characters like Amigo, Knights, and Shadow is such a tedious pace breaker. To make things more annoying, they also locked up your avatar slash me behind the Grand Prix alongside Dr. Eggman, which was also such a stupid decision for them to make. But if you thought all of that was bad, they also decided to lock off the expert difficulty, which was a very shitty thing to do. So yeah, imagine going through the campaign unlocking all the stars on hard difficulty only for them to bring out expert mode as well as superstar showdown you're going to be redoing all of these challenges as well as playing the new challenges just to unlock ages which is the hardest character for you to unlock this unlocking system is awful sonic and sega racing did it way better when it comes to unlocking content because all you had to do was play the fucking game you unlock content by collecting sega miles which you can use to buy all the characters really quickly this unlocking system is a goddamn joke. The fact that I have to collect almost all the stars to unlock most of the roster is such a tedious chore to do. Hopefully they'll improve on that with Team Sonic Racing. Despite those few negatives, I had fun with this game. Sonic Transform is still a very fun racing game from start to finish. The tracks are awesome for the most part, the character roster is pretty good, the transforming gimmick is really fun, and the soundtrack is very amazing to listen to. I had a lot of fun with this one. I wouldn't put it above the first game, that's for sure. But it still aged well for a game that's nearly 12 years old. This game sold over a million copies within the first four months. While not as impressive as its predecessor, it still sold extremely well. Sonic and All Stars Racing Transform gets an 8 out of 10 for me. This is a game that I recommend you all to pick up. Just like Sonic and Sega Racing, this game is also 20 bucks. So get it on the PS3, 360, or Steam, whatever. Now, before I end this video, I want to give a really big apology to all of you who were waiting for this review to come out. I would have gotten it out earlier in April, but I couldn't record any footage for the review due to my nieces and her kids living with us for a few months. So I didn't have any access to my PS3 at that time. But now, we're finally back on track. My next review will be on a game that I've been meaning to talk about for a while. So tune in next time as I cover Cat Girl Without Salad, a Moose Bouche, however you say it in French. Afterwards, I'm tackling Team Sonic Racing before this year ends, damn it. But until then, this is Star the Protagonist signing out. As always, go Kigenyo and have a star tastic day, everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.